All right, uh, let's take a look at problem 10. Uh, and so this is our second example um, using the Lee Kessler tables. Um, but yeah, let, let's take a look at it. So we're told the boiling point of oxyline at one bar is 139 degrees C. What is the state of oxyline at point one bars in 200 degrees C? All right, well, let's think back to identifying phases. So boiling point of oxyline at one bar and 100 is 139 degrees C, right? So um, at one bar, uh, there's T sat. Okay, so if I'm um, at saturation at one bar and I increase the temperature, is that going to push me towards liquid or vapor? Well, that's going to push me towards vapor, right? If I'm on my saturation curve at one bar uh, and 139 degrees C, and I keep pressure constant, but I increase the temperature, that's going to push me towards superheated vapor. Okay, the same token, if I'm, say, on my, um, so increasing the temperature, right, pushes me towards uh, vapor, just as if I were, say, on my saturation curve at, um, let's just say, one bar and 139 degrees C, and I were to decrease the pressure, that's likewise going to push me towards uh, vapor phase. Right, so we're decreasing the pressure and increasing the temperature um, as compared to our saturation point. So both of those are going to have the effect of pushing us towards the vapor phase. So A must be uh, vapor. So A, vapor phase. Uh, B, so now we have 100 moles of oxyline that are to be loaded in a tank at 0.1 bars and 200 degrees C. What is the required volume of the tank? Okay, so in, in B, we know that we have 100 moles. Right, so well, let's let's even take inventory. Right, so in B, ah, so in B, we're told that we have 100 moles. Okay, so n is 100. Okay, um, and we also know that our pressure is 0 0.1 bars, and temperature is 200 degrees C. Okay, and from A, right, we said that at at this state we'll have a vapor. Okay, so I have a vapor at a low pressure and 200 degrees C. All right, so now question is, what's the required volume? Well, if I have a single component, single phase system, I have two degrees of freedom. So I need to specify two intensive variables to pin down the state of my system. Um, we're given pressure and temperature, so I know the state of my system is fixed. So one, first, before I even try and solve it, I know this problem is, is solvable. All right, so now what's the required volume? Well, so in order to you know, get the extensive volume, the first thing we'll need to solve for is the intensive volume, which in this case would be the molar volume. So you want to calculate the molar volume, volume per moles, uh, because then I know N, uh, the moles, uh, and so I could use that to calculate V total. All right, so V total will just be equal to N times V, where V would be my molar volume. Okay, we know N, and so the key then is going to be to calculate V. Okay, so how you go about doing it? Um, well, you could use the Lee Kessler tables, um, or is even a first estimate here, since I'm at low pressures, you might even think about using the ideal gas equation of state. All right, if I were to assume ideal gas, right, or maybe you calculate both uh, and compare, but if I were to assume an ideal gas, okay, just to give you an idea, all right, if we had an ideal gas, ideal gas equation of state is PV is equal to RT, so V then would just be RT over P. Okay. If we were to use the, use the Lee Kessler tables, okay. So if we were to go the Lee Kessler route, then the idea is we would use the equation of state for real fluids, PV is equal to ZRT. Okay. Or you could just as well use an equation of state. Um, but goal would be to calculate uh, Z here. So V now would be Z R T over P. Then to get Z, so Lee Kessler is just the Z is equal to Z naught, <clears throat> which is a function of my reduced coordinates, uh, T R and P R plus omega times Z1. Okay, where Z1 is also a function of my reduced coordinates, T R and P R. So in order to solve this um, from the back of our book. All right, you would find TC and PC. Okay, and then once you have TC and PC, since you know temperature and pressure um, already, um, I could go calculate TR and PR. Okay, again, the note, if I calculate T 
TR, reduced temperature, I need to use absolute temperature. So here I'm given temperature in degree C. I would first want to convert that to Kelvin. Then once I have the temperature in Kelvin and have the critical temperature in Kelvin, I can use that to calculate um, TR. All right. And then once I have my reduced coordinates, TR and PR, um, and uh, omega, all right, I would go to, um, remember there's two appendices uploaded. I go to Smith, Van Ness, and Abbott. Okay. So what Smith, Van Ness, and Abbott has that our book doesn't is they have tabulated um, data for Lee Kessler. Um, whereas our course textbook only has graphs, right? And perfect, personally, I find uh, the tables to be far easier to read um, than the graphs, okay? And so if you wanted to pull critical properties, um, they should be here in Appendix B, right? So I could go find O-xylene. O-xylene is here, all right? And then find omega, uh, TC, and PC. Okay, so O-xylene, um, here would be omega, TC, and PC. Again, that's a critical temperature in Kelvin. And then here would be the Lee Kessler tables. So once you calculate TR and PR, you would just find um, where you are in, in the table. Uh, so again, if I had a reduced pressure of 0.4 and say a reduced temperature of 0.9, uh, this would be my uh, value for Z0. Um, and it may be that you need to double interpolate on, the, on these tables. It's just uh, the nature of the beast. And then after you have Z0, you'd go to the table for Z1 uh, and find your value of, of Z1. Okay. Once you have that, well, then you can calculate Z. And once you have Z, you can use your equation of states of, of real fluids. Okay, cool. But uh, goal would be to get V. And then once you have V and you have N, you can get V total. Okay. You, know, and, you know, again, keep in mind, um, you know, as we, we talk through these problems, you know, two suggestions would be, you know, one, before you even actually do any calculations, is just to try and, you know, walk through the problem and make sure it's actually solvable. Um, I'd hate for you to try and solve a problem that's not even solvable. I promise I won't do that to you on an exam, but <laughs> uh, in the real world. Um, and then two, you know, keep in mind Gibbs phase rule uh, to try and figure out how many degrees of freedom you have is, is you try and figure out if these things are solvable. And when it comes to calculating properties, so we're using Lee Kessler here. Later, I'll use equations of state, our cubic equations of state. We've used virial equation. Remember, it's always all about calculating Z, right? We're always trying to calculate Z compressibility um, and then using that uh, in our equation of state of real fluids, right? We calculate Z, okay? That once we have Z, we can plug that into our equation of state of real fluids. All right, and then last, uh, C. Okay, so what is C asking? C wants to know, or it tells us the tank can safely withstand pressures up to 44.9 bars. How much oxyline can be stored in the tank under maximum pressure at 200 degrees C? Okay, so how much oxyline? Okay, so how I would interpret this is in B, we just calculated V total. So I know the total volume of my tank. Okay, now in C, Okay, temperature is still going to be 200 degrees C. Um, maximum pressure is 44.9 bars. Okay, under this maximum pressure, how many moles can I um, hold? Well, I know the number of moles that I can hold is going to increase as pressure increases at constant temperature. Um, and, you know, we can increase the pressure to, to P max. So basically how I would see this is just like B. Okay, so, you know, here now we're going to have uh, our P that we're going to use is going to be our P max, okay, and then T will be our 200 degree C, okay. We're going to go through the same exercise, okay, we want to calculate V, okay, so V is going to be calculated from our equation of states of, of real fluids, okay. Here we would definitely want to uh, use uh, the Kessler table or an equation of state to calculate Z because uh, now pressure is what 40 is over 40 bars so now we're dealing with a, a pretty high pressure here 44.9 bars okay so um, ideal gas equation of state definitely won't uh, apply okay but um, you know we'll use Lee Kessler to calculate Z okay I know um, T and P okay we know TC and PC uh, we can look up uh, values of Z0 and Z1 under those conditions in the Lee-Kessler tables and calculate Z. 
And then once I have v, um, now I know v total. Okay, remember v is nothing more than uh, v total over n. So uh, if we know v total and we know little v, right, n's going to be v total divided by v. Okay, so I get v total. Okay, this is from uh, part b. You calculate v uh, with this temperature and that maximum pressure, and you can use that to solve for uh, n. Okay, and again, here we're using Lee Kessler tables. Uh, you could just as well calculate z from uh, cubic equations of state. Um, truncated virial uh, probably wouldn't be applicable here, uh, especially, well, maybe for b, uh, c probably not since we're dealing with, with high pressures. Okay, uh, so Lee Kessler or uh, cubic equation of state would be uh, the way to go. Okay, hope that helps. Um, let me know if you have any questions.